Good morning, ladies. How are you? Happy Friday. This is the last training this week, and we are going to be chatting about partnerships and collaborations, which I'm so excited. It's kind of a part two from last week, uh, the past two networking weeks when we talked about how to network and then how to network while at home during quarantine. So I'm going to wait for a couple ladies to pop on. And then we will get started. I'm going to do a ton of tips on partnerships and collaboration. So I have five tips on how to make an effective partnership and collaboration, what to consider within your branding when reaching out, um, actual steps and templates to when you reach out. Good morning, Janet. Thanks for the little hello, sending you so much love. Um, and then I got lots of stuff here. I literally have like three pages of notes for you ladies. Okay. And then different types of collaborations or partnerships you can offer. And then just some general overall tips. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, we already have quite a few people on. So I'm just going to jump right in and get started. If you ladies have any questions, comment in the comment box so that we can have a workshop and, you know, work together as we go along. I really enjoy when you ask questions because I'm so used to doing workshops that when I talk to um, a screen, it is really funny for me. So <laughs> let me know. Okay. So the first thing I want to distinguish between is for you to be very clear. Are you looking for a part? Be very specific on what you want. Are you looking for a partnership to genuinely collaborate and bring in other people in your work? And or are you just looking to increase your clients and your revenue? I, I get very, um, I don't know, I get this like weird sensation when we talk about this because I know so many people seek partnerships for the wrong reasons and with not the right intention. So going into this conversation, the overarching, you know, principle, is it overarching or overarching? Heck, who knows? Um, but if the big concept here is intention, be very good about your intention and know what your intention is, knowing that you want to create mutually beneficial relationships and genuinely help one another. It's so important. So isn't it good to have both? Have both what? Are you talking about um, partnerships to collaborate and partnerships to build clients? And yes, the answer is you do want both, but you want to be clear in the beginning so that you can be clear when you do your ask. I think confusion happens and collaborations aren't as effective when people don't know what they're approaching and they're like, hey, let's work together. And they're like, okay, now what? So I'm going to give you a bunch of tips to consider, and that is actually our first. So being very specific on what you ask for. So I'm going to give you some examples. Are you asking to have them on a webinar, do a Facebook Live? What is the collaboration that you actually have in mind? Just saying like, hey, let's collab. Picture, I really want you to picture talking to a friend when you reach out for collaborations. And if someone was saying the same to you, because if someone's saying to me like, hey, let's collab, I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? What, what do you want to do together? <laughs> so just be very specific on what that looks like, and then you can build it out and we can create some strategy from there. I hope we can actually get into some strategy today too, but I'm going to need you ladies to give me specific questions so that I can give strategy on how to actually work in those collaborations. So if you have specific questions, let me know. Um, the second tip to consider before going into collaboration. So the first is being very specific, knowing what you're asking for. Second tip is knowing what you can do for them. So, and telling them right up front, Hey, can we work on a, um, a course together? This is my idea for the course. This is how many people I'm going to sell to. This is how many people are going to have eyes on you. So it's really important to know your data and your statistics. How many people open your emails? How many viewers and followers do you have on your platforms, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram? Where will you be sharing? And where can they guarantee that people will be seeing them? 
again, that's knowing that you're providing them value. So know what you can give them and what benefit it is to them to collaborate with you. And that's not, um, that's really just coming at it from a good place. You want people, you don't always want to be asking, you want to be giving. So with collaborations and partnerships, how can you give, how can you give, how can you give? The, set, the third thing is to just really be sincere. And I think that comes from giving. When you have an authentic desire to collaborate, to make each other's businesses better, no lack of mentality here. There is plenty to go around. We can reach more people, have more impact if there's more heads in the pot than just one, okay? Number five is paying attention to who you're collaborating with. So be very intentional with your collaborations. It's kind of like dating. Look at their videos, look at their content, look how they speak. Do you like the way that they do business? Do you like them as a person? Do you think that their community has a similar demographic to yours? Will you mutually promoting something give you more followers and more clients and help you to grow your business? If there's a disconnect and they are, you know, very simple, their network is mostly men and yours is mostly women, unless you're trying to go into the male space, it may not be a good partnership. So really just looking at who is their main demographic and you can ask them quest these questions also as you get more into the dating and depending on how large the collaboration is, you can ask them like, hey, what does your target demographic look like? Who is your your average consumer or client these are fair questions to ask when you get into the dating game and depending on what how big your collaboration is if you're doing a huge event or course together these are important things to know if they're just joining you on a facebook live or um you know an easy webinar they may not, those might not be necessary questions. Look at the work that you're putting in to the collaboration and what you'll both be getting from it. One thing to consider when reaching out for collaborations is make sure you have all your set, stuff set. Now, I say this with an asterisk because I don't want you to think, oh, I don't have my stuff set, so I can't reach out for collaborations. That's not true, but have that in mind. Like I had mentioned before, have all of your social media pictures the same. Make sure your bios are, are set. Just make it clear who you are and what you do and start to build that content. And so if you haven't started to build your Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, choose one and just continue to build that brand so that you do have, it's like a website now. Your Instagram is kind of like a website for what you do. So can, we can continue to build on that and we can actually chat about social media um, on a different day. We do have a question coming in. So for me doing mermaid children readings, these, this is so fun. So Paige is a, is a mermaid and she does readings for children. Um, reaching out to mom influencers, what are you giving them? Trying to figure out wording for all this, wanting to provide something for them maybe doing a collaboration, a video or something. Totally. So you can also give them free things. So you know who talks about this a lot is Gary V. So Gary V talks a lot about getting in the door and always giving value and free stuff. So he will literally say whether you are a video or, um, you know, a video guy, I can't think of another example right now off the, off the top, but then we'll go into pages example to say, Hey, I'll do videos for you for a year. If they have a million followers and you want to, to get into that community, then do what you need to do to get in there. So I say that because Paige, what I might do, and this is just off the top of my head. So we can talk a little bit more after as well, but I would say like, Hey, um, Number one, I think with you, people will really resonate with your why. Telling them your why is really important. Like, hey, I want to do this right now. I want to spread love. I want to make children smile. I know moms are having a really tough time. And I'm not sure if you're having a tough time, but I want to bring a little bit more joy into your day, right? Like that sounds like something they'd want to say yes to, right? 
and then say, you know, would you want to do a fun, you know, Facebook live or Instagram live or post, and I can do a fun video for all of your moms and children followers and see what they say. Then what you can do is say to them, you know, I want to make this worth it for you. What would be worth it for you? Ask them what's worth it for them. Ask them. I, you don't have to know all the answers. So even when people, when I reached out for my online summit, not sure if you caught it, I had 34 interviews and I emailed probably two to 300 people to get those 34 interviews. Some people said yes, but not right now. Some people just flat out said no. I would ask them, not a problem. What makes it worth it for you? What criteria do you consider when saying yes? How can I get you to say yes is basically what you're saying to them, okay? Then you could say to them, hey, you know, I'll do the general one, but I'm happy to hop on a video call and do a private, um, a, a private chat with you and your children. Would that be something that they would like? You know, this is a $500 value and I'm happy to give it to you and I just want to spread love. So I would offer them a free one for them and their kids and then ask them what would make it worth it for you. Does that make sense, Paige? We can all give something for free. You can also say, I'm happy to connect you with any other influencers and or collaborations that I do within the community so that we can continue spreading love and light. And then when you open up that door, they may say, no worries, I can refer you to people in my community as well, right? I hope that helps, Paige. Let me know, ladies, if that helps and if you have more questions about what you can give them. Um, so just to summarize where I left off before the question was just your branding to really pay attention to your branding. And if you need more help, you can go back to, we have a branding workshop that I'm going to link above and you can look at that. So Paige says, okay, great. I didn't think it was okay to ask them what they want a hundred percent, right? Yeah. Be normal. Like we don't need to have all the words. And we can just say, you know, I'd love to do this. This is why I want to do this. Is this something that you would be into? That's kind of the format. Hey, you know, I love you for whatever reason. So, hey, you, okay, give me your template early. Hello, so-and-so, give them a compliment. Love you, love your brand, love what you're about, whatever. This is what I'm thinking about doing. This is what I'd love to do with you. This is why. And is this something you would be into? Always end on a question. You want a response. Again, big, um, a big, big, big important factor here. Keep your messages as short as possible. If I get a message, most people are looking at things on their phone, right? If I get a message on my phone and I get a lot of collaboration and partnership messages, so I'm speaking from both ends, from someone who receives them and someone who gives them, is when I see a message like fill up my screen, the likelihood that I'm gonna be able to read it right away or get to it is not very high, right? You wanna make it really short. You wanna feel like you're talking to a friend because if it's a really long message, it just looks like a sales message. So you wanna keep it really short. Um, as short as possible. So with you, Paige, it would just be like, hey, I so love your feed and, and everything that you're doing. I actually am a virtual mermaid and I'm looking to spread some love right now. Would you be interested in possibly me giving you um, a free thing? Um, we can, again, this is just me talking off the top of my head, but are you interested in me giving you a free session or doing a possible collab for your moms, for your mommies and uh, children in your community. That's it, right? Like pretty short. And then you can always give more info after, but you want it to be short. How do you find the right collaborators? Example, there are so many mortgage agents and I am chatting with a couple, but trying to fight the right, find the right collaborator. So a few ways, referrals, I often ask, hey, ladies, like, who are the best mortgage agents you know? And start building your community through referrals. The second is a lot of research. Go on Instagram and, and LinkedIn and put in keywords. 
So you want to be finding mortgage agents that have a good brand, that have a good community, right? Working with some agents that are smaller may be beneficial for certain projects. But again, this goes back to the first point we talked about. What's the purpose of this collaboration? Are you looking to build your community and gain clients? Well, then you also want to collaborate with people that have the same desire and have put time, work and effort into building their community because then you're not going to have the same goals. So I would put into Instagram and search keywords for real estate agents, whatever cities you're looking for, mortgage agents, you can reach out to real estate as well as mortgage. Because if you find some good real estate agents you like, you can ask them, who are your favorite agents? Who do you like to work with? Um, and then the same goes on LinkedIn. Do some research and look. You wanna be looking, do I like their brand? Do I like their presence? Does their brand align with mine? I can speak for myself, but I do look for followers, community, and vibe in in my collaborations but again it depends what you're collaborating for that may not always be important you can also google for mortgage agents or insurance real estate you can look at people that have won awards you can reach out to people who have won awards you can reach out to people who are already speaking on this topic so i also when people when there's different events and people speaking at events, I'll look up their bios. I'll see who else people are collaborating with. If people are collaborating with other people, chances are they're open to collaborations. Does that make sense? I hope that helps with that question. So we already did the reach out template. Simple, short, give them a compliment, tell them what you're doing and why and what value you can offer them, and then ask them a question. You have to end on a question. Is this right for you? So I'm going to even make an example. You're even collaborating with clients. So when I first started the ladies community, it actually started on Bumble. And I love Bumble, but it it's really difficult to talk to all these people online. And I really just wanted to meet people in person. And so I started doing these little events. So even so I had multiple people reaching out on Bumble to women to, to come to our live events and you know, whether that's allowed or not, whatever, it's for a different conversation, <laughs> but we would message them and we would look at who had the best results and what their templates were. And I would always ask, I would send two messages or three messages in other people's one message. And it was always better. So don't think you have to get all of the answers up front. So Paige, if you're feeling like you're, I'm just going back to Paige because of her question. If you're feeling like your messages are getting too long, then just send a, hey, I love your stuff. I love what you're about as your first message. Then you can go into the second. Then you can go into the third. You don't have to get all of your answers up front, right? Okay, sound good? So I will give you an example, even when I reached out for people for the ladies community, I would say like, hey, you know, love your vibe. We're doing a meetup next week. Does this interest you? See how short it is? And they'd be like, yeah. Be like, okay, great. It's at this time and this time, you know, um, or even, I would even take it back a notch. I would say, hey, love your vibe. I'm looking to bring together a group of women. To, to connect, is this something that would interest you? And they're like, yeah, it would, or no, it wouldn't. And then it's be like, okay, great. I'm having an event next week. Would you like to come? So do you see how I keep it short and always end on a question? I hope this is helping you. Okay, now I wanna go into offers and what kind of collaborations you can do. I've already kind of set it up already. Lives, webinars, workshops, events and summits, and something that's also really popular right now, which I've been on both sides of, and I want to give um, my two cents, is getting people to promote your stuff is also really important. So I know you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I have this course that I'd really love to get someone to promote, okay? And get like a promo team. And that's awesome. In my opinion, so that can work, number one. Number two, 
it's really important to get them involved in whatever way you can. So I get a lot of messages from people being like, hey, can you promote my event? And that's awesome. I want to support everyone who sends those messages, but it's not really, it's, I, I can't always do that. But what I never get, so being on the other side, so now there's, this is a tip. If you're going to send me a message to promote your stuff, I never get people saying, hey, I have this event coming up. Would you mind sharing it? What events do you have coming up? What can I share for you? <laughs> that, like, it seems so obvious, right? I never get that. And I'm just boggling my head. Like, why? If you're going to ask me to do something for you, again, back to value. Offer what you can do for the other person. Does this make sense, ladies? Is this Does this boggle you as much as, I, as it boggles me? But again, a lot of the time, it's just people having an intention of, hey, I need to get my stuff out there. Who can I ask to get my stuff out there? They're not paying attention to their intention. They're not paying attention to building a mutually beneficial collaboration, right? So just say, like, what can I promote of your stuff? That's my number one tip. My second tip is if you're doing something, see if you can get them involved somehow. And let me give you some examples. So I'm building a course right now. I haven't even done this yet, so I'm giving you a little pre-tip, but you've seen it, I'm sure, on other people. The people I'm going to ask to promote my course, I'm going to get their stuff and put it in the bonuses and then ask them what would make this worth it for you. So, hey, um, Veronica, I'm running this course. I'd love to include your stuff as a bonus. I love all the information and content you put out there. Is this something you would be interested in? If so, we can cross collab, my stuff, your stuff, and what would make it worth it for you, right? Do you want, is sharing enough? Do you want a percentage? You know, it depends how much their course or content is going for right now for price point. Do you want me to give you, you know, 30% back or 20%, whatever it is to cover the cost of your course? And this is where this discussion comes in. It's okay to ask them what makes it worth it for them. Okay. Um, now I'm trying to think what, how else. So same thing if you're doing a summit and or event series. See, if you're going to ask people, hey, can you share my stuff? Think about, hey, do you think I can bring them in as a speaker? It's a lot easier for people to share your things if they're promoting something for themselves also. So if you're saying, right, and I'm going to give you both examples so you can hear them from both sides. If I'm promoting Cheryl's workshop, it's very different for me to say, hey, guys, check out Cheryl's workshop versus, hey, guys, I'm so pumped. I'm going to be part of Cheryl's workshop on Saturday. We're going to be talking about how to stay active in quarantine, right? It's a, it comes from a very different share and also gives more uh, more incentive for that person to promote it. And the energy is coming from a very different place because they're actually involved and it doesn't look like a straight sales promo. It just looks like a collaboration. Okay. Is this making sense? Is this helpful? Um, it is so funny because I've been on both sides so I can see, and then I know what doesn't work for me on both ends. And so I hope I'm giving you all of those um, those tips to help you when building those collaborations. I, let me see if I have any more tips for you because I have lots of notes still. So let me know if you have any questions with collaborations and partnerships, but just at the end of the day, in summary, get them involved as much as possible. Date them, see if you like them, build relationships over time and always be circling back. So even during Corona, I, you want to nurture your relationships authentically, not because you can get something from them. And so even yesterday, I was getting a lot of messages from people to share their stuff and nobody was asking me to share or asking to share my stuff, but that's cool. <laughs> and so what I did was I wanted to be a solution to the problem. So I literally sent out a straight email to my network 
and people that have spoken at my events and done interviews with me in the past. And I said, how can I help you right now? What I know Corona is impacting some people more than others. And I want to, A, I want to check in and see how you're doing. And number two, how can I promote you? What offers, promos, programs do you have going on right now that I can share? And I'm just going to build out some shareable content in my social strategy for May and June to share other people's stuff. And so you want it. I didn't ask for one thing in that message. I just said, how can I share? How can I help? How can I be of service? Is this making sense? Okay. So I hope this helped you. I, I went over branding templates for reaching out as well as really knowing what you're reaching out for and continuing to build this. So I'm just going to wait, ladies, give me a thumbs up and, or any other questions or comments to let me know if you have any other questions about this topic while we finish up. Cause it is, it really does work. Your collaboration strategy will help you build your community, will increase your email list, will increase, people to your opt-ins. So what you want to also be focusing about is within my collaboration, how do I capture the effort? Do I have an opt-in and a sales funnel? Do I have a way to capture their emails? Are they actually joining my community? So I'm actually glad that I thought about this because I didn't write this down. But when you're doing a collaboration, you have to make sure you're giving a call to action so that it's actually worth it for you. You're putting in all this effort into collabing and sending out messages. Make sure you do a call to action when you're doing a webinar, a live, a summit, anything. You want their emails and them into your community in some shape or form. It's really important. And I actually work on this with my clients too. Collaborations and partnerships are very effective. When my clients have no community, collaborations and partnerships is the first thing we go for. Do as many lives as possible. But I want to also tell you that you have to be willing to put in the work. Like I said to you, when I did my summit, this is not a joke. To get 34 interviews right now, I emailed 200 to 300 people interviewing or sending out 10 emails, 15 emails, I want to be super real with you, is not enough. If you want to build something and you want to make impact and you want to expand your community, you have to put in the work to do so. So I'm going to challenge you to go out there, send those emails. And again, Gary Vee talks about it all the time. He says, allocate an hour a day to send out as many messages as possible for collaborations. I even want to give a shout out to one of my good friends, Sarah, who's a celebrity stretch therapist. And when she was first starting building her community and wanting to stretch celebrities, she offered them free stretches. If you like me, you can work with me in the future, right? So you have to be willing to do what it takes to get in the door, to build the community. And you have to put in the work, sending out 15 messages, not enough. You want, if you're really serious about building a community, you would want you know, a live or a webinar almost every day for a month. That's 30 webinars, 30 workshops, 30 lives. You can do it. How badly do you want it? This is not a lazy game. Entrepreneurship, not for lazy people. <laughs> yes, you want to be taking action from inspired action, but I don't think that this is what people, people don't talk about this enough in the back end of actually what goes into getting stuff done. Because when I have clients coming to me and saying, oh yeah, I did it, I reached out, and they only reached out to 20 people, you're not going to build a community. Okay? So I want to be really real. I do have one more question coming in. How would you like to get emails and such from collaborations over lives like Facebook and Instagram opt-ins? So you want to have a funnel. You want to have something that they can download. And we can talk about this um, on a later date. Let me know actually in the box or with a heart if you ladies have a current opt-in. So right now I have two. I have five networking tips and two tips to alignment and inner peace. So you want to have 
an ebook or an online webinar or a summit that people can download, opt into, they give you their email to get the information. This is the most effective way to get people's email addresses. And that way they're getting something, they're getting value for their email and they can always unsubscribe later. So that's the best. Make sure you are building out that funnel so you can capture emails and then make sure that they're going into your community because yes, Instagram, Facebook is really useful to build community. You know, that's how the ladies community started. However, your email list and your text community via phone, which is now becoming more popular, is still where the money's at in the sense that you cannot control who sees Facebook posts and who sees your Instagram and social media posts because algorithms are always changing. So your emails and your text, however, you can directly control who sees them, who gets it, and then you can just track your content and your data for open rates. Make sense? Okay, cool. Alrighty, I hope that helps. Send me a DM or message me if you have any other questions about partnerships and collabs. I hope that helped you. And I hope you have a great Friday. Have a wonderful weekend and we will be back next Monday. I am going to give you a little warning that I'm going to be changing the structure of our online daily coaching in a week or so. So I'm going to keep you updated on that. I think I'm only going to now move it to once or twice a week and then we'll go from there. So keep me updated. Let me know what content is most useful to you. And I love when you send me questions because that gives us stuff to talk about because I really want to be doing this for you to give you as much info as possible while we're all at home and while we're all trying to, to navigate this time. So sending you so much love. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.